Hey, good morning. It's me, Barry Miller, your CRNA for the day here at Dr. Miami's office in sunny South Florida in the winter, and it's like 80 degrees out. I love this place. Anyway, I had a special request this morning. Somebody asked if I could show what my morning setup ritual is like. I'm going to try and do that as best as possible. All right, hang on. Okay, so uh, here's my machine. I have an Astiva machine, um, and it's uh, somewhat basic, but it's pretty nice. Anyway, um, I've got my oxygen and nitrous source over there. The first thing I do is I walk in, turn it on, and I evaluate how much pressure I've got. Um, so I'm towards the end of this um, tank. I will be changing that over rather shortly. Nitrous is good. Um, turned it on. I've got a little bit of a warning sign. I have to reset this, so I will do that. And while that's re-spooling, what I do is typically I start at the top of my machine and work my way down into a cross kind of pattern. So up here you can notice I have my suction. Turn it on, it's working. Feel that it's working, it's got good suction, but I do have to put a hose on there and there it is. All right, it's always important to have some redundancy built in. So I have um, extra um, tubings or hoses here for suction. Yankauer suction's here, um, ready at my disposal at any given time. Talk about um, your um, emergency plans. Back here, we have in the back of the machine an easily accessible um, our emer <clears throat> emergency oxygen. So what I always do is I'll go down here and look and you see here is coming from the big tank, here is the emergency tank. It's important that it's at zero and, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm gonna come back here, open up the tank with the valve and wrench and you see right there, I've got good pressure. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about that is this, if when you shut off the power, look what happens. I mean, the pressure to, from the emergency tank, look what happens. This will stay up for quite some time. And it may stay up if it's a sticky or an old valve. And um, for quite some time, um, you may come and think that you've got oxygen in there. You crank the tank, you don't look, and it's empty. So um, that's a little pitfall you want to watch out for. Okay, so working my way down... I'm going to make it like a T and look at all these things at this level. See if I've got oxygen flow there. I do. Okay, this is not hooked up. I know that because I'm using this unit. Check everything over here. Look at my gas levels. You can visually inspect those and see what you, I've got. So I'm good here. If not, I top that off. Okay, then I come over to my ventilator. Again, this is just the way I do it. Come over to the ventilator and take a look at it. My uh, absorbent is nice and white, so I don't need to change that or do anything there. If it's purple, you may have to consider what your actions will be at that time. If it's pur purple, you guys probably know that it's you know either exhausted or almost exhausted, and you may have to change it. All right, so clearly I don't have a circuit put on here. I'm gonna do that right now, and um, we'll check that circuit to see that it's functioning properly. All right, so okay, attention Kmart shoppers. If you have a problem with your system, with anything in your anesthesia system, it's probably gonna be right here, okay? This circuit is fraught with areas that can become disconnected. Typically, this neck piece can become disconnected quite easily. This connection can be loose. Up here at the... Um, uh, CO2 gas analyzer. This can not only become loose right here, but this unit pops out easily and it's hard to notice. You see? See right there? You just push that bad boy right back in there and you're good. Also, if there's any water in there, you want to empty that out as well, okay? All right, so I've hooked up the, um, the bag to the circuit to mimic your patient's lungs and I've got the ventilator on. As you can see, it is functioning quite nicely which means I have no low pressure um, leaks. Now, the way you can check a high pressure leak is to disconnect the ventilator and uh, manually inflate this and squeeze it and make sure that your pressure goes up and holds at about 50 millimeters of, uh, of water pressure. Okay, but it's kind of, I'm by myself and I really can't show you how to do that, but I think you know how. All right, so you guys have seen this a million times before, the top of my airway cart here. Um, I've got a... Um, 
oropharyngeal airway tongue blade, MAC blade, and handle based on the appropriate patient size and selection, endotracheal tube, pilot balloon um, up here, and some lubricant, okay? Um, nothing really special there to go over, and we're ready to go. All right, so I uh, hope I've shed some light on uh, how to check your machine a little bit better. Every machine's gonna be a little bit different because every machine is different. Um, and you gotta follow your manufacturer's suggested uh, mechanisms to uh, check their machine's patency and to make sure it's working fine. Um, have a great day, guys. See you later.